He assembled the Avengers, and now Robert Downey Jr. is assembling a new team. The Big Event In the beginning of June, in Las Vegas, a global artificial intelligence event was being held. This event hosted the pioneers and thought leaders on machine learning, automation, robotics, and space. The event was Re-Mars, created by Amazon. The event talked about topics like colonizing space and showcased the latest in robotics. And it was at this event where Robert Downey Jr. stood on stage and explained what is next for the man known around the world as Iron Man. Fame gives you access to all kinds of people. Robert Downey Jr. explained, Recently, I was at a table with super smart, impressive, expert folks about six months ago, and the following statement was made. Between robotics and nanotechnology, we could probably clean up the planet significantly, if not entirely, within a decade. The room burst into applause. Being essentially a 54-year-old child, I said, let's do it. Let's commit to a process. Let's form a coalition. And that did not inspire the reaction I expected. It was dead silence. It's a kumbaya pipe dream. It's an impossibility, kind of like the movies. So to me, that's kind of a turn on. Robert plans to spend the next 11 months working on setting up the Footprint Coalition. I'm willing to spend the next 11 years making good on that statement. And I'll repeat it. Between robotics and nanotechnology, we could probably clean up the planet significantly, if not entirely, within a decade. But nothing else was said or announced about what he plans on doing. However, we don't have to look too far to see Iron Man-like technology being used today in the realm of cleaning up the world. Technology we have today. We are at the beginning of a golden age of AI. Jeff Bezos, founder and CEO of Amazon, says, Recent advancements have already led to innovation that previously lived in the realm of science fiction. X-ray vision recycling. Sorting all the pieces that come into a recycling plant is a major undertaking. Everything needs to be sorted so that it can be recycled and you can also get non-recyclable waste that gets mixed into it all. One solution that is being tested by Veolia, a United Kingdom waste management company, is to use artificial intelligence to sort the recyclable waste. Cameras take thousands of pictures, which work together with x-rays that look through the waste to see what is there. Artificial intelligence is used to determine what types of plastics are present and what can and can't be recycled. Veolia is also experimenting in using robotic arms to help recycle electronics. Millions of flat-screen TVs are discarded each year. And if robots manufacture these TVs, then robots should be able to take them apart. Turning plastic into dollars, the power of the blockchain. 80% of the plastic pollution in the ocean comes from vulnerable and poor regions that have almost no waste management systems. So, with no waste systems in place, it then gets thrown into the rivers and ends up in the ocean. But what if plastic can be made too valuable to throw away? That is what Plastic Bank is achieving today. They are converting plastic into a currency. Plastic Bank has built recycling infrastructure in Haiti the Philippines, and Indonesia so far. To date, they have collected 10 million pounds of plastic, and as a result, children are now in schools because their families are recycling. This is thanks to Plastic Bank's education program. It has also created new jobs for communities. This all works because people can earn a stable income by collecting and then exchanging the plastic, just like a currency exchange. People can open their own digital bank accounts with Plastic Bank. For many, this is their first bank account. And when they collect plastic, they get paid at a center with digital tokens using a blockchain. Blockchain is just a fancy term for a secure database. 
In exchange for the plastic collected, people can earn school tuition credits, cash, digital currency, healthcare coverage, and more. So a plastic collector is able to build digital savings and because of the blockchain-based identification system, they can start qualifying for new opportunities. This blockchain system also makes it safer for people in poor areas to save money since they don't have to carry cash around with them or save their children's tuition by keeping it hidden away at home since most people are not able to open a bank account. All of the plastic that Plastic Bank collects and recycles is used by their partners who are mainstream companies selling consumer goods. These companies can now have an impact on the world by using this recycled social plastic created by Plastic Bank. It's a way to stop plastic from ever entering the ocean, says founder David Katz. Citizen Science, Drones and Artificial Intelligence One of the biggest problems we have in fighting plastic pollution is what we don't know. If we want to tackle and fight plastic pollution, we need as much information as possible about the problem. Ellipsis Environmental says that out of the millions of tons of plastic that ends up in the ocean, we only know where 1% of it ends up. The other 99%? We just don't know. It is missing. Not knowing where, when, and how the plastic ends up in the ocean makes it impossible to monitor the situation, spot problem areas, identify trends, enforce laws, and track improvements. Ellipsis Environmental is an initiative that uses drones and AI to measure the tides of plastic washing up onto our shores. Every time they visit a beach, they take hundreds of photos of the shorelines using their drones, and these drones are ones that anyone can easily buy. Volunteers have logged in online to identify plastic waste in the photos. This taught the artificial intelligence algorithm what is plastic waste. The more photos that are taken, the more data there is, making the AI better at recognizing patterns and becoming more accurate. This way, it won't mistake fish bones, seaweed, or a seashell as plastic. And volunteers can also upload their own photos to help with the machine learning. So in the future, there will be an open source global map of plastic pollution. Eventually, the artificial intelligence, along with the drones, will be able to detect and recognize the plastic waste on its own, without the need for humans. And it would also mean that other areas can be monitored too, such as the surface of the ocean, the seafloor, and rivers. By knowing where, when, and how the waste ends up where it does, and even who is responsible for it, will allow governments, councils, and NGOs to be able to take action against the plastic pollution. Nanoparticle Recycling When you want to manipulate matter at an atomic and molecular level, that is when you bring in nanotechnology. One way that nanotechnology can help in cleaning up the environment is to use nanomaterials. These nanomaterials can be used to convert CO2, which comes from burning fossil fuels and through the manufacturing of plastic, into useful products. The CSIR Indian Institute of Petroleum and the Lille University of Science and Technology in France have developed a nano CO2 harvester. This harvester can use water and sunlight to turn CO2 in the atmosphere into methanol, which can be used as an engine fuel. Researchers at the University of California, Riverside have created a way to turn glass waste into silicon nanomaterials which can be used to store energy in batteries. And plastic bags can also be recycled and repurposed into nanomaterials. Plastic bags, through a process of shredding and heating them in a mixture, can be turned into carbon dots. These carbon dots can have uses in solar cells. Harnessing the Powers of the Ocean While a lot of people are working on recycling plastic on land and stopping it from entering our waters, one organization is out there in the ocean right now building a self-controlling cleanup unit that takes away the plastic waste that is already polluting our oceans. When plastic waste gets washed out into the oceans, the currents take it far and wide. Currents end up gathering this waste into garbage patches, 
There are five garbage patches around the world where all of this waste has gathered due to the currents. One garbage patch is in the Pacific Ocean off of the coast of California. Ocean cleanup is out there in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, creating a coastline where there are none. Their system uses a 600 meter long flotation device. This sits on top of the water while a skirt hangs below it underwater. The skirt drops down longer in the middle so that as the wind and currents blow the flotation device, it moves in a U-shape. The plastic then gets collected in the center of the U, making it easier to collect. The system allows for marine life to flow under it as the plastic gets gathered above. Then a ship that acts as a garbage truck will come and remove the waste. Ocean cleanup is using the powers of Mother Nature to fight plastic pollution. The system has built-in solar-powered sensors and cameras that transfers data on the environmental conditions, navigation, and the system's operational status. And algorithms are used to locate the best places to deploy the systems. Right now, the Ocean Cleanup is launching their second deployment into the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to prove and enhance the technology. And they predict that by 2040, 90% of the plastic in our oceans can be removed. Backyard Recycling Plants, Getting It Done. Not all innovative and exciting solutions that help fight plastic pollution need to be in the realm of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and nanotechnology. It is hard to know if the plastic that gets thrown into the recycling bin actually gets recycled. In some places, only 10% actually gets recycled while the rest ends up in landfills. But here is an idea that almost anyone can create in their own garage or start in their community for a more local approach to fighting plastic pollution. Precious Plastics is an open source organization that freely shares their designs and video tutorials, allowing people and local communities to build their own recycling machines. There are four machines that can be built to create your own recycling workshop all of which can fit in the size of a home garage. First, you have the shredder. This will cut down plastic waste, such as bottles, into plastic flakes. These shredded flakes make it easier to store, wash, sell, and melt into usable plastic materials and items. After the shredder, you can choose to build three different machines. Each machine melts, presses, and cools down the shredded plastic in different ways to help you create different types of objects. There is the extrusion machine. The plastic flakes get melted and pulled out into a thin strand of plastic, which can then be used in 3D printers or spun around a mold. The injection machine melts the shredded plastic and injects it into a mold. This is ideal if you want to make small objects over and over again. And if you want to create larger objects that are more solid, then the compression machine uses an oven and a car jack to press heated plastic into a mold. Each of these machines can be built with tools and materials that are easily available, meaning any local community or a person with space in a garage can start building their own recycling workshop. Robert Downey Jr. says, in 11 years, when I'm 65, if we've made even a little dent in what I think is a massive threat to our future and the mess we leave behind, I'm going to come back and throw the nuttiest retirement party you've ever seen. Visit ResonateProject.com for more ideas on how to help others. And on the next episode of Venture City, we take a look at what the Amazon city of the future will look like.